Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining and Mars episode 31. Let's dive right into the safety stuff. And yes, I know some of you know all about this, but there are a large number of people who have no idea the power that these lithium ion batteries contain and the circumstances by which we use them. So let's just get through it quickly. First, there is no quote safe use of these lithium ion batteries. They were never meant to be used outside of a fully protected battery pack. Any use of these batteries is at your own risk. An internal defect or any misuse of mishandling can cause the battery to catch fire or explode, and that can result in property damage, serious personal injury, or even death. Please keep the plastic wrap in the battery and the top rig insulator just under the plastic wrap at the top in perfect condition at all times. Charge these batteries only with a good external charger on a non-flammable surface and only when you are round and wake and never use a lithium ion battery at above its true continuous current rating and never charge or use the battery when it's hot or cold. This video and these choices are only my personal opinion based on my preferences and my test results. If you use and like a different battery, that's fantastic. Use it. This video is not an attack on your choice of battery. It is not saying that anyone who uses different batteries has made a bad choice. This video is only meant to be a resource to help narrow down the choices of which there are hundreds out there for those who are shopping for batteries. Definitely remember that any battery that is not from Samsung, Sony, Murata, Panasonic, Molycell, or Sanyo can change at any time. These choices are and can only be based on the batteries that I've actually used and tested here. The printing on the wrap can be different for big company batteries from the different factories that made at different times. So if the batteries you have, let's say you have a Samsung 30T and the printing's a little different, that doesn't mean you have fake batteries. That printing can change. Lastly, there are many other great batteries out there. Just because they're not on this very short list doesn't mean that there's suddenly crappy batteries now. This video is just about the batteries where if someone backs me into a corner and says, I only want one battery named. These are the batteries that I would tell them about. For the best 18350, it's a tie between the Vapcell 10 amp 1100 milliamp per hour and the Keep Power 10 amp 1200 milliamp per hour. Now, both of these appear to be uh, rewraps of the Young Dali New Energy Company 18350. So you can get either one of these. They're the same cell. Consider them to be about 9 amps and about 1,000 milliamp per hours, performing best at uh, 7 amps or less. That's about 20 watts or less. The best 18650, or what you can call the best all around 18650, the Molly Cell P26A 25 amp 2600 milliamp per hour cell. This is a great all-around battery. It can be used in non-regulated mechanical devices or fully regulated devices. You can use it up to about uh, 75 watts in a regulated device. The 18650 runners up. Now these are still great batteries, but they may be actually the best battery for certain particular users. The first one, the Sanyo NCR 18650GA. If you're a low power vapor, you know, under seven amps, maybe uh, 20 watts, flashlight user, uh, any of those, this is, will perform better than the Molly Cell for you. Definitely keep it under 10 amps or 30 watts. For medium power, the runner up, Samsung 30Q, up to about 15 amps, 45 watts. Anything above that, and the Molly Cell is a better choice. Uh, best for high power, the Murata VTC 5A or 5D, they're pretty close to each other. You're really not going to see much of a difference, if any, um, when you use them. For up to 25 amps or 75 watts, I still like the Molly Cell over it because Molly Cells can be bought from authorized vendors, recently manufactured of known grades, whereas it's a total crapshoot going from the Muratas because they're gotten on the gray market, secondary markets is uh, excess inventory with lots of unknowns. Now the best for very high power, Samsung 20S, a 2000 milliamp per hour 30 battery. They're graded up to 30 amps, about 90 watts in a regulated device, and are the better choice if you're at very, very high power levels uh, with a single 18, or even multiple 18650s in a device. Best 2700 is the Sanyo NCR 
2070C, not 2700C, 2070C, a 30 amp, 3500 milliamp per hour battery that is a great performer. If you're running at low power levels, typically under 7 amps or about 20 watts, there is a better cell for you, and that's the Sanyo NCR 2700B. Definitely keep it under 10 amps, 30 watts. It'll perform a better efficiency and perform better at under 7 amps, 20 watts. You might get a little bit more running time with this than the 2070C if you're at low power levels. Now, the second best for higher power levels, if you can't find a 2070C, is the Sanyo NCR 2700A. Definitely under 30 amps or 90 watts. Performs a little better under 25 amps, 75 watts. A little more efficient. You don't get as much voltage sag. Uh, while you're using it. Best 21700, the incredible Molly Cell P42A, rated at 30 amps, 4000 milliampere hours. This is a fantastic all around ultra high performance battery, and I highly recommend it because you can get it in known grades from authorized vendors, recently manufactured, and it's a great choice for, for regulated and unregulated devices. If you're always down at lower power levels, I'd say you know, maybe up to 12 amps, 36 watts or so. Vapcell has got a great performing 5,000 milliampere hour, 12 amp, uh, 21700. That can be a good choice if you're down under the, particularly if you're down in 20, 25 watt range or, uh, or about seven amps or so. Now, if you can't get the Molly Cell, uh, second best for medium power levels, up to about 25 amps or 75 watts, is the great performing Samsung 40T. And the best for high power, it, it runs at a slightly higher voltage than the Molly Cell uh, at the beginning, but then about one third of the way through the discharge, the Molly Cell, Molly Cell excuse me, still performs better. But if you're looking for just pure raw power right up at the beginning, first quarter to one third of the discharge of the battery, you can't beat the Samsung 30T up to about 35 amps or about 105 watts in a regulated device. Okay, the best 26650 is the Vapcell, uh, purple 4200 milliampere hour, 32 amp, 26650. A good all around performer. We don't have a lot of options for high performance, high power levels for the 26650s. There's just not a lot of them made, but this right now is, is probably the best choice. If you're always running at slightly lower power levels, there a, a, can be a better choice for you. It's the Vapcell Gold G53. It's a 20 amp, 5300 milliampere hour, 26650, which you can use up to 20 amps, 60 watts. It's best though, a little more efficient, get better performance, uh, under 15 amps or about 45 watts. Now, if you can't find that other VAP cell, the best one, uh, then the second best are a tie, the Galizi 30 amp, 4300 milliampere hour, and the Homegrown 30.3, 4244 milliampere hour, 26650s. They appear to both wrap the same Yongle New Energy Company uh, battery, but, well, they look and perform the same. I can't say that it is the same battery, but they look and perform the same as the YDL, and they're the same as each other. Uh, you can use these up to 30 amps, 90 watts. It's better down lower, about 25 amps or so, 75 watts, just to keep up the efficiency and keep the voltage sag from uh, becoming too great. The other sizes, like the 14500s, 18500s, 16340s, I haven't tested enough of them to be able to choose the best yet. But I hope to be able to in, in the weeks and months coming up. And when I have some choices, I'll do another video and present them to everybody. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.